previously on Third and Roll. Looks like they're staying on the field. What are they thinking? And if you're an Ottawa fan, you have to be reconsidering why you follow football. But wow, I mean, could anything else go wrong in a half? I guess we'll see what else they can add to the list. I like that goal to go. I'll have a goal to go, please. It is an age of Canadian football domination. In the West, the Edmonton Eskimos are a dynasty without equal. Behind the quarterback tandem of Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon, the Eskimos have won five consecutive Grey Cup championships between 1978 and 1982. In the East, four teams battle it out through a six-game season to see who will meet Edmonton in the championship game. The Toronto Argonauts have not hoisted a Grey Cup since 1952. Will this be their year? Let's find out. This is Third and Roll. Welcome to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. This is the podcast where we play the 1985 board game Canadian Armchair Football and role play a Toronto Argonauts broadcast from the 1980s. My name is Spencer. This is my brother Alex. Hello. Today is episode 16, Sweet 16. We are here in Toronto. It is the Ottawa Rough Riders on the road against the Toronto Argonauts, having a heck of a time with it so far. We are starting the second half. We are going to go into the studio now for the halftime show with Ron Booman and Brett Brannigan. Ron, take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Booman. Welcome to the Canadian Armchair Football Podcast halftime show. We have played a half of football. That is a half hour and half the game. And here we are in the studio where we pass the time until it is time to return to the green rectangle. And as part of your halftime entertainment, I will now hand over the microphone to our resident livid commentator. And today he seems a little bit extra livid. Take it away, Mr. Brett Brannigan. Run! Run! You took the words right out of my mouth. I cannot believe what is happening on that field. I am extremely livid, extremely livid by the play of these Ottawa Rough Riders. I wouldn't let these kids play on my high school football team. This is absolutely ridiculous. It is a despicable display that they are putting on there. You gotta... They teach you when you're a little kid, when you're a little, little kid, I teach my daughter that you gotta have two hands on the ball when you're holding a football. Too many turnovers, too many turnovers, five turnovers in the first half. That is, there is no justification for that whatsoever. I'm surprised that it's not 49 nil. Argo's up 23 to six, they really, they got to put these guys away. It is shameful that they even have to compete against a team of such poor quality. I don't understand how Ottawa made it into third place when they're playing like this. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let's get this thing going. Ron. Thank you, Brett, for your no-holds-barred commentary. And now we return to the field for part two of football. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Ron and Brett. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm still Ron Booman, and uh, I forgot to announce the re results for the other game. Uh, so there's actually another game of football going on at the same time. So our correspondent at the other game has now tallied the scores. And we now have a couple more numbers for you in the game between the Montreal Alouettes and the Hamilton Tiger Cats, we have a score of Hamilton 10, Montreal 5. And now, with my duties completed, I return the sound to Edward Welch and Norman Knuckleburger on the field. Wow, Ron. Well, thank you so much for that. That is key information for the Argonauts. So, as you know the Argos are tied for first place with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So if they are going to keep pace, they will need to win this game. So 
Now, before we begin the the half, I want to give an update from the end of the first half. There was a, there was a mysterious double major penalty, thirty yards, and we didn't actually see what was happening. But we learned that it had actually been a karate chop. Wow. One of the Ottawa uh, offensive linemen delivered a karate chop to a defenseless Argo neck. Uh, So they decided that it was unnecessary roughness uh, because karate chopping is not considered necessary roughness in this game. And they also decided that it was unsportsmanlike since the act of karate chopping the neck is not considered to be the act of a sportsman. I thought this was a little bit of a severe penalty, a little bit of chopping, you know, a little bit of karate. You know, I I, I don't think it hurts the game, but the officials want to make a statement with that one. You've always been soft on chopping, Norman. Wow. Well, that is quite a play. And I got to say, certainly not not sporting, in, in my opinion. They would never, he would never get away with that on the grounds at Eaton where I went to school. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. Well, we have Jerry Organ on to kick the ball off to the Toronto Argonauts. The kick is up. And that is a 60-yard kick for Jerry Organ. That's going to bring the ball down to the Argos' five-yard line. And Preston Young on the return. He picks up 25. So the Argos have been dominating in many ways, but also in the kicking game. Ottawa has not had very much luck whatsoever with their returns. This is Chad Owens, the flying Hawaiian and former receiver for the Toronto Argonauts. You're listening to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. Jackson on the field now. He is targeting Greer, targeting Greer down the middle. It's going to be a long pass. And it's incomplete. Incomplete there. It's going to bring up a second and 10 now for the Argos. And Jackson is going right back to the pass. It's a pass from option. And that ball is intercepted. Intercepted by the Ottawa Rough Riders. So Robert Sparks in there with the interception and he gets five yards on the return that's going to bring the ball down to the toronto 45 yard line what oh there listener edward welch here please have a seat where were we last oh yes my time at the Ashford Church of England Primary School. Did you know that that's where I first learned how to use a microphone? I was a young lad, maybe 10 or 11 at the time, and I had the opportunity to do the school announcements at Ashford. It was such an exciting time for me. This was, of course, the the early 40s by this point, so I was gripped with the fever of World War II, and you know what? Danged if I wouldn't give a call to action to all my fellow primary schoolmates out there, and I would say, students, rise up. We will fight the teachers in the hallway. We will fight them in the study hall, and I will be danged if we will not sit in detention without trying to escape. Those were heady days, dear listener. The world seemed so much simpler back then. Allies, Axis, students, teachers, bankers and miners. It was really a much simpler time. But there in the early mornings of Kent, that was where I got over my initial stage fright and the stutter that had plagued me from a very young age where I said yes we must get out there and make the announcements attention students attention students today in the cafeteria will we be serving what what pheasant again pheasant oh come on come on lads let's show a spark of inspiration shall we 
That was where my love affair with the microphone began. So, Ottawa with a little bit of good news to start off the third quarter here. It's first and 10 from their 45 yard line. Holloway handing it off to Crump. It's a run from option. And Crump gets pushed back. Five yards there. Bruce Clark pushing him back towards the center line. Holloway going to the long pass, pushing it down the field. That ball is up, and it is intercepted. Preston Young having one heck of a game. He is making tackles. He is intercepting balls. He is having some really good kick returns. And he picks up five yards on the return. So just like that, just when you thought Ottawa was going to turn things around, Preston Young swoops in to say, not in my house. This is James Franklin, quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts, and you're listening to Third and Roll, the Canadian Football Board Game Podcast. So, with 13 minutes to go in the third quarter, we have Jackson handing the ball off to Metcalf. It's an off-left tackle. And Metcalf gets stuffed. He gets stuffed there for no gain on the play. The great defensive tackle for Ottawa, Mike Raines there with the stop. That's bringing up second and 10 Argos from the 30-yard line. And Jackson is going right back to Metcalf. This time, he's doing a sweep. It was successful in the first half. Let's see what happens here. And nothing. That is surely going to set up a two and out here for the Argos. Now, there was a proper wall. I mean, that was actually zero yards. Two plays. They did not get an inch. So let's see here. Are we going to return to the poor offensive performance we saw in the first half in the first quarter pardon me or will we have the plays and the points that we had in the second quarter but for now we have a xenon andrew shishin on for the punt that is a real boomer from xenon that is a 50 yard punt ottawa catches the ball at their own 30 yard line and brings it up 10 So it will be first and 10 Ottawa from their 40 yard line. Welcome back everybody. We have Ottawa with the ball at their own 40 yard line. They are going straight back to the end run and they get stopped for no gain. Running backs really having a difficult time here in the second half. That's gonna bring up second and 10 now. Ottawa, not to be discouraged, going right back to the running play. It's a fake reverse. It's a fake reverse. And they get, again, nothing. Nothing there on the play. Wow. That is four scrimmage plays in a row of absolutely zero yards. These runners are going nowhere. Someone gave some spinach to the defensive lines here in the at halftime. We have Jerry Oregon on for the punt. So Jerry Oregon there with a 45-yard punt. Preston Young is back to return. And Preston Young picks up 13. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. Let's go down to the officiating crew. The ruling on the field is no yards. No yards on the play. Ottawa was within the five-yard barrier when the ball was caught by the Argos. That's a 15-yard penalty. It's going to be first down Toronto. Wow. So with that, the ball gets moved up 15 yards. It will be first and 10 Toronto from the 53-yard line. Ottawa just didn't want to give them any yards. I mean, they've given them enough yards already. They they thought, we're going to stop here. Jackson on the field now. Jackson looking to slow things down a little bit. He's handing it off to Metcalf. It's going to be a run over center. And Metcalf picks up six. So that's a good first down production there from the Argos. It's going to bring up second and four. You really get to work on your basic arithmetic when you play this game. I mean, you have first and ten, and then you move six, and now it's second and four. And you're counting up to 55, and then you get over that, and then you got to start counting down because the Argos are on to the Ottawa side of the field. 
Well, you're just, re- you know, I was thinking this could be like a grade one level, but now you're like, you're introducing the sophistication. Yeah, once you get to 55, you're, you got to mirror and go backwards. The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. That's a right triangle, you idiot. There's a lot of numerical proficiency that is required in this game. Absolutely, especially for us here up in the booth and the linesmen out there on the field. Working. So, Jackson handing it right back to Metcalf for a draw play. Gets stopped for no gain, so that's going to be a third and four Argos from the 51-yard line. Just about the outer limits of imaginable field goal range here. Zenon is pleading with the coach. He's saying, coach, I can do it. Coach, I can do it. Willie Wood is saying, you know what? We're up. We got the lead. We're at home. Go for it, Zenon. Go for it. And so Zenon Andrew Shishin is coming onto the field. That would be a... Where are we at there, Norman? We got the 52-yard line? 51-yard line. 51-yard line. So that would be a 58-yard field goal. You can do it. You can do it. Listen to me. You can do it. And he is going for it. It's a miss, and it goes through the end zone. So we had the distance. He just did not have the accuracy, and that is going to be a rouge. So with that, it is going to be 24-6 to Argos, and Ottawa will get the ball back. So welcome to Canadian football, where you can score a single point, and they're giving Xenon a break from the kicking. He does not have to do a kickoff. Ottawa's is going to send the offense out and start at the 35-yard line. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are going to pause from the action on the field here and go back to Todd Gray's exclusive interview with Her Majesty herself, the Royal Highness, Queen Elizabeth II. Ron, take it away. Now, I understand that you were actually able to see a Canadian football game after your first visit to Canada in 1951 as Princess Elizabeth, Duchess of Edinburgh. Yes. Officially, you were attending a Toronto Maple Leafs game, and that's what the history books reflect. But I'm told that you actually sneaked out of that Maple Leafs Gardens and made your way down to Exhibition Stadium to watch the Argos play the Ottawa Rough Riders. Yes. That's wild. You know, I'm picturing you as a young princess sneaking out of the gardens and rushing down Main Street. I can only go at a walking pace. Oh, right, right. Of course, of course. You don't want to be attracting any kind of attention. So you're walking down Young Street, and then you hang a right onto Queen, named after your late great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. Is that correct? Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, when you got to the game, did you enjoy the game? Yes. I'm glad to hear that. Now, did you know also that our American cousins play football as well. Have you had the opportunity to view the American version of Canadian football? Yes. Oh, you have? You have. That's wonderful. And what did you think of their version of our game? You see, it's it's much smaller, isn't it? Mm, That's very true. That's very true. The field is smaller. The the end zone is smaller. Except the roster. The roster is really the only thing that's bigger. They have a 53-man roster instead of a 46-man roster like we have here. What do you think about having a roster that that size, a 53-man roster? Very un- unwieldy. Mm, yes, yes, of course, of course. Now, you've had to do a lot of scouting in your time. Of course, when you're, when you're a young girl, I, I understand you like to scout horses. Yes. And later on, you would have to uh, look at uh, some you know, staff for your, for your palace. When you're trying to bring somebody on, if you say you're a general manager and you wanted to bring somebody on onto your roster... What would you be? What would you be looking for? I mean, look at the size of the man. Mm, yes, the size. You want much more of a, a big, a big football team that can really just grind the ball down the field. Now, I've taken up too much of your time already. Do you have any wishes for the future of Canadian football? It stays. I mean, it it just remains itself. Yeah. Ah, I like the monarchy. Thank you so much. Wow, Ron, thank you very much for that. That is really exciting stuff. Who knew that our monarch had such a deep personal connection to Canadian football, let alone 
very particular opinions on the size of NFL teams. So Ottawa, with the ball at their own 35-yard line, there are seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Holloway handing it off to Crump with a reversal. And Crump... He has a hole. He has a huge hole in front of him. That is a 65-yard run. What a run. Wow, Norman, this is this has got to be the longest run of the entire Canadian armchair football season. To date, 65 yards. Wow. I like that choice of distance. That is, in fact, the width of the field. The field is 65 yards wide here in Canadian football. And, but it was a good thing he decided not to run across the field, but to run down it instead, 65 yards. So with that, Ottawa is at the Toronto 10-yard line, knocking on the door, going to an off-right tackle. And he gets stuffed for no gain. Holloway hands it back off to Crump, going for that reverse that was so successful last time. But not again. Not again. That is going to bring up now... Third and roll. So the Argos defense stiffens up once again, and they just do not want to let anything pass those final yards. So we have Jerry Organ on to kick the field goal. The kick is up, and it's good. So that's going to bring the score up to 9 for Ottawa and 24 for the Argos with five minutes remaining in the third quarter. This is James Franklin, quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts, and you're listening to Third and Roll, the Canadian Football Board Game Podcast. Jerry Oregon staying out there on the field. He is going to be kicking the ball off to the Toronto Argonauts. That is a 60-yard kick that will bring the ball down to the Argos 5-yard line. And Preston Young picks up 30 on the return, so it's going to be... First down, Toronto. ...from their own 35-yard line. So Jackson handing it off to Metcalf. It's a draw play. And Metcalf gets stuffed. Not having much luck with the rushing game in the second half, the East Toronto Argonauts, but they are not abandoning the run. We've had more zero-yard plays in this game than any other. I mean, there's just there's just walls out there. And it has all been in vain. The fellowship has failed. What if we hold true to each other? We will not abandon Marion Pippen to torment and death. You can see Jackson turning to Metcalf saying, I will not abandon you. I will not abandon the running game. Not while we have strength left. We're coming right back. And this time it's going to be a run from option. Let us hunt some walk. And Metcalf picks up five. So that brings it up to the 40 yard line. Not enough for a first down. The fellowship has failed. So who do we have coming out onto the field? You all know the answer to that. Zenon Andrishishin. He is on and he is ready to punt. And that is a 45-yard punt from his 40-yard line. So that is going to bring the ball down to the 25-yard line. And then on the return, they get five. So that's going to bring the ball up to the 30-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 Ottawa from their 30-yard line. Greetings from the desk of Dr. Footius Balunicus. The Piazza Santa Croce in 16th century Florence is said to be the birthplace of Calcio Fiorentino, the Florentine kick game. In this game, played on a field of sand, each team has 27 players with no substitutions permitted. There are four goalkeepers, three fullbacks, five halfbacks, and 15 forwards. And the captains have tents in the center of the goal net. 
When play begins with the firing of a cannon, the players try by any means necessary to advance the ball into the opponent's goal. It was at one time traditional for the winning team to receive a cow, but this has since been reduced to a free dinner. Us down, Ottawa. Holloway going right back to Crump with an end run. And he picks up 10. There's a flag on the play. The ruling on the field is illegal interference on the defense. That's a major penalty. That's a 15 yard penalty. Wow. So the referees are coming in to give a helping hand to the Ottawa Rough Riders. That's going to push them up 15 yards. That's going to be an automatic first down. Is that penalty enforced on the end of the play? Uh, yes, I believe so. Very well. Oh, look where we are. Norman, we are at that, your favorite line on the whole field. What's it called, Norman? It's the center line. The point of total symmetry. You look one way, it's 55 yards to the goal. You look the other way, it's 55 gar- yards to the goal. You look one way, you're counting down numbers. You look the other way, you're counting down numbers. You are exactly balanced in the middle of the universe. That is what it's like on the center line. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. We have Holloway going right back to Crump. And it's a 10-yard pickup there for Crump. So Ottawa, with some a little help from their friends in the striped uniforms, are making their way down the field. Holloway going to go for a pass from option now. And it is intercepted. Intercepted. That, I believe, is the third interception of the game for Ottawa alone. Just when they seem to get something started it is quickly turned right around Preston Young with his third interception of the game really having a stellar year for him and then he picks up five picks up five on the return it's going to bring the ball up to the 30 yard line defensive hat trick three interceptions in one game now that is something you're listening to third and roll can I say the same thing but in Tamil the third and roll with that, that is the final play of the third quarter. Argos with the ball, with control. Ottawa was able to cut their margin by two points as Toronto scored one point in that quarter, whereas Ottawa scored three. So it's 24 to nine for the Argos, a 15 point lead heading into the fourth and final quarter. Norman, you're shaking your head there. It's been an unfortunate display there from Ottawa. Maybe it can turn around. It's only two touchdowns. You never know, but they seem to be pushing, and it is not working in their favor. You know, it only is disappointing if you look at it from the offensive point of view. I mean, from a defensive point of view, this is a beautiful game. Now, could you imagine if they scored points by the defense so that you actually get points for everything the offense doesn't do and if you look at it that way then this would be a high scoring master class of defense next time on third and roll holloway's in trouble holloway's scrambling is he able to get away from it seems that the rough riders may have remembered how to play football what's that norman we you spend a lot of time in pool halls that would be uh quite a story the story of the decade to kick off the 1980s Third and Roll is an independent Canadian football board game podcast recorded in Toronto, Ontario in 2019. Today's episode features the voices of Spencer, Alex, and Subi. This works for me. Thanks, Subi. Our cover art is illustrated by Bryce Hall. This episode was edited by Spencer Adams from Toronto. Our theme music is Magic Mountain by Jazzar. Brett Brannigan's theme is The Spellbreaker by Tritachion. Both songs used through a Creative Commons attribution license at freemusicarchive.org. Ron Booman's theme is Box Mach für Dach, performed by United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. The Pedans theme is Box Variacho in a Sank Club, performed by Kimiko Ishizaka. 
Todd Gray's interview music is Box Aria Variata, variation number three, performed by Brendan Kinsella. That's a lot of Bach. All Bach pieces used are in the public domain. If you'd like to help support the show, you can tell a friend or leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher you use. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash third and roll and become a patron to get exclusive early access to new game episodes and to become a recurring character on the show. If you want to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter at third and roll or send an email to third and roll at gmail.com. New episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on third and roll. I'm not an afterthought, Spencer, but I'll move on.